Welcome back to Golden Rule Radio. We're going to jump right into gold and silver, and we've got a lot of news to touch base on in regards to markets that move gold and silver. Miles, why don't you take off and lead us technically? So starting off with gold, like we often do, uh, we did have that second touch onto the 1263 level we've been calling for for the last couple weeks. Uh, We are showing some pretty aggressive bullish divergence on the four hour charts. I am expecting gold to test that 1310 level again. I think we're up about 15 bucks this morning, Wednesday. So we're back up in the mid 1270s. And I think we've got another 20, 30 bucks to go before gold tells us whether it's going to push back up to the 1340s, 1350s, or if we're going to continue to linger around the high 12, low 13 level. So I'm excited to see where gold goes over the next week or two. So Miles, are there any concerns if the 1310 is not exceeded and we come back down to test the 1263? And if the 1263 doesn't hold, where do you see us going down? I would say our next Fibonacci level is down around 1212 if you want to really stretch the charts back out over the last year or two. So that's certainly an option as well. And that is not of concern to us. It's just another opportunity to step in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in the long run, we all know where precious metals are going because of Fed monetary policy, because of what's going on in Europe right now, because of what's going on in Asia right now. We're going to talk about a couple of those things here in a minute. So anytime I can buy gold in the 12, 13, 14, 15, 1600 dollar range, I'm going to be happy to do it. Moving on to silver, which followed suit, although with a little bit more explosive movement, we had that touch into the 1660s for a second time and then immediately jumped up 50 cents. We are strongly above that declining trend line we've had for a while. So silver, again, is the metal to watch. We've been harping on silver for a while. You want to own some silver right now. When silver plays catch up, you're going to be glad you bought some. These are really bullish bounces, and they're very encouraging to me. I said a couple of weeks ago that my gut instinct against the technicals was that we should come down and retest, and we have. I don't know what's going to happen from here, but I am very, very encouraged by the fact that your support levels have actually held. Sure. And same with platinum that we saw with silver had a little bounce. We're pushing back up pretty strong. I'd say next resistance is up at around 945. And I do think we're going to move up there. And then, of course, palladium does hit the quintuple zero again. Uh, Just this morning, Wednesday, 1000.00 for palladium. We've had a little bit of a pullback, as you'd expect. Anytime you see a lot of zeros, a lot of traders put positions at those numbers. So we should see palladium inch back a little bit, but boy, it hasn't come back much. It refuses to die. I mean, I, you know, I don't, I don't know, Robert, you know, if you have anything to add on the platinum palladium ratio, uh, but nothing has changed in terms of our recommendation there be on the platinum side of things. Don't get wrapped up into the palladium bull market. No, I don't have anything to add about palladium, but something else that's just not dying is the stock market breaking 23.5 on the Dow. Yeah, but it has been bouncing between 23.250 and 23.5. So I think it's just a pause, uh, not necessarily a top, although obviously it could be. How much of this is Trump rally, you know, since the inauguration? How much of this is Federal Reserve talk with the replacement of the Fed chair? Let's segue into that. I mean, it's, you know, the last couple of weeks we've been really focusing on Taylor potentially being nominated as the Fed chair. Now it's looking more like Jay Powell. Yeah, I think Powell is who makes the most sense because I think Trump wants to leave his own mark on the world. That's kind of apparent. So I don't think he'll just continue with the same Janet Yellen perma style. And uh, I also don't think that the Fed and the government can afford to put somebody in there like Taylor because they can't afford to raise interest rates. So I think Powell is the choice. I mean, that's who makes the most sense anyway, in my mind. What does Powell mean, Miles? Yeah, realistically, Powell definitely is the safe choice. As a lot of people in Washington, a lot of people at the Fed argue that he is the moderate candidate. However, he's voted in favor of every single Fed decision since he's been in a position to do so. So... Even though he's considered a moderate, he's never once voted against uh, the direction of Janet Yellen. Well, that's that's the truth, too, is he is Janet Yellen in a different body, in a sense, right? I mean, Trump may be wanting to make his own mark, but Robert, I would argue that nothing really changes with Powell, and that's why he's the safe one. You know, Miles was telling me earlier, the richest guy to ever hold that position? Yeah, according to a New York Times article I read this morning, he's going to be the wealthiest Fed chair we've ever had. And what else is interesting is that 
if Janet Yellen doesn't get a second four-year term, she will be the very first Fed chair that wasn't reappointed for a second term. Speaking of wealthy people, aren't there some wealthy people in Catalonia? Oh, yeah. Then they're screaming for their independence. Are we going to see that happen in Texas next? You know, they did vote for independence. This is modern day revolution. It's exciting stuff, quite honestly. And it's absolutely speaking out against the European Union. And where does it head next? Well, we've seen so many precedents set over the last couple of years in Europe between Greece and the bank bail-in with Brexit, Brexit with Switzerland depegging from the euro, and now with Catalonia, it'll leave. No, and that's right, because it's all about debt. And Spain cannot, to Robert's point, you have a lot of wealthy people in Catalonia. Spain cannot afford to have them leave. The United States cannot afford to have Texas secede from the union. So there will be there will be some serious resistance and, and some ramifications. Whether it goes down militarily or not, I don't know. That's like trying to predict this petrodollar effect after the first of the year with China and everything else. The only end game, if the dollar is going to survive from a petrodollar standpoint, is war. And I'm not predicting war. I'm just saying that's where governments go when they start to lose control. Keep your eye on Catalonia and let's see what ends up happening militarily with the last gasp of of survivability from the European Union. Well, and the biggest debtors in the world cannot remain the biggest superpowers in the world forever. So the question is, what happens to the U.S.? What happens to Europe? Because the biggest lender in the world, China, is buying gold hand over fist, is setting up trade deals in oil, is looking at maybe doing some backing of their currency and physical assets. And they really want to get rolling after the first of the year. And I think that we'll start to see some indications of that. And, you know, you can sit there and throw balls up in the air to distract people like Mueller's doing with Manafort, and it's not going to work anymore. American public's not buying into it. You know, that, that whole thing to me, come on, Manafort, I'm not, I'm not saying he didn't do wrong. There are 50 people in line behind him that you could get for the same thing right now. That's how corrupt Washington is. Yeah, Tori, are you able to post a $10 million bond? Only if Robert <laughs> lends me the money. <laughs> Which I wouldn't. <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> That's a lot of change. That's a lot of change. <laughs> I think the important thing about China wanting to trade oil in yuan and back it by gold is that there have been other countries and leaders who have taken that route. And what's happened to them? Well, Saddam, Gaddafi, those two that's scenarios, what I'm talking about. that's exactly what happened. We can't, as the U.S., defend that position the same way. Then also with Saddam, we can't do that. But so can we do it indirectly? Can, can we, we do, be doing right. it indirectly through North Korea? That's the good question. I think that's where we are in the world. Yeah. With the world powers in the process of shifting from 100 years of dominance of the U.S., to potentially the next hundred years of dominance for China, that's the, we're in this shift where there's not just going to be some day that we wake up and here we are, it all changed. We are watching it change right now. It's fascinating. Syria represents Russia. North Korea represents China. We're watching it unfold and it's going to pick up steam after the first of the year. Well, and you're saying we can't do what we did with Gaddafi here. We did it back in the 60s with Kennedy. Yeah, maybe you do have the U.S. government trying to (laughs) implement the same type of behavior to go in and physically remove someone. Maybe, I mean, who knows what's going to happen? That's the thing is uncertainty just pervades every part of our world right now. You can't tell me what's going to happen in a year or two right now. And so when you talk about uncertainty, what thrives on uncertainty? Gold. Gold. Speaking of gold, our specific recommendations are what, Tori? British sovereigns right now. We, we touch lightly on it. That's Very a low brainer. premium. Semi-numismatic premiums are gone, you guys. Yep. Take advantage of the opportunity to step in. Don McIlvenny said this morning to us, that is the biggest opportunity that you have right now is in the semi-numismatic category because you can buy them at essentially the same price as you've been buying bullion for 10 years. That's right. And this is the first time we've seen this in the company's 45-year history. Huge opportunity. And speaking of Don and David, they'll be on the circuit. We're going to hit these seven cities. We're going to talk about those sovereigns, but we're going to be mentioning platinum and palladium as well. So with that, let's wrap it up this week, you guys, uh, on behalf of Miles and Robert. Signing off, this is Tori with Golden Rule Radio. 
As usual, if you like what you heard, click that subscribe button, throw us a thumbs up, make sure to engage in the comments. If you have any questions about the upcoming seminars, go to McIlvaneyICA.com slash briefing. You can always call us at 800-525-9556. Have a great week. Bye.